Before I tried mindfulness, I felt threatened all the time. Really disillusioned with life. Confused. Tired, stressed, frustrated. Scattered all over the place. Overwhelmed. Anxiety over the future. Worried. It was kind of taking over my life. I tried mindfulness because I felt stressed out. I was very concerned with the future and what my day was gonna look like tomorrow and everything that was happening. My life was always about what happened in the past and what's gonna happen in the future. So by doing mindfulness, I live much more in the now. It is just a different approach to life. We all experience difficult challenges in our life, like stress, pain, and depression. Mindfulness can give us resilience to rise above those challenges and live life more fully. Mindfulness is a particular type of meditation where we bring our awareness to the present moment. We can let go of the past, let go of the future, live life more fully, more joyfully. We all are too busy. I think it's a thing that everybody's just so busy all the time right now. You always have something that you have to do or you're always going towards a certain goal and mindfulness is just taking a moment to look at your life without any expectations. Take time for yourself, rather than getting carried off in all the daily activities that you have. Mindfulness can be practiced by anyone, no matter what your religion, your age, or your background. We don't have to wait until we have time to do like a formal sitting meditation to practice mindfulness. We can bring that same mindful awareness to any activity that we're doing through our daily lives. So walking can be a meditation, eating our lunch, brushing our teeth, being creative, painting, writing, or playing music can get us deeply in touch with the present moment. Mindfulness is available anytime, anywhere. It's a tool and skill that you can use for the rest of your life, and it's, it's easy through simple daily or not daily exercises. I mean, it just keeps us all just calm and present, and I think that that's healthy for anybody. It can be beneficial for everyone, and you just have to go in with an open mind and take everything slowly instead of trying to get through life quickly and do as much as I can, as fast as I can do it. Instead, just enjoy everything you do and maybe look at life from a more positive perspective. So I really invite you all to try it, to experience it, and to see for yourself how mindfulness might be able to affect and transform your own life. دوستان با درودی فراوان به شما به برنامه مادر و کودک مامتاق خوش آمدید برنامه ای که توجه ما صرفا ارتقاء آگاهی در رابطه با بهداشت روح و روان و جسم و به قول معروف منتل هلث هستش برای خانواده در این برنامه توجه صرفا ما روی به صلاح رابطه برقرار کردن آن عزیزانی هستش که در رابطه با سول و یا پیس لرنینگ و یا پرورش سول در کامیونیتی در جامعه کوشا هستن فعالیت میکنن پرکتیس میکنن یا خودشون در منزل یا به عنوان یک پرکتیشنر با جامعه و اون محیطی که درش زندگی میکنن و در این چند سالی که در برنامه مامتاک من این دوستان و عزیزان رو دور هم جمع کردم و سعی کردم که رابطه برقرار بکنیم با هم بسیار بسیار خوشنودم از اینکه کامیونیتی و جامعه پربار جامعه ای که در رابطه با راهبری پیشرفت در رابطه با ادویکیشن آموزش و پرورش و اون چه ما می توانیم بکنیم به خصوص برای پرورش سل تاکید روی پیس لرنینگ پرنتینگ هستش و اینکه اگر ما صلح جهانی می خوایم باید از من شروع شه از من مادر یا پدر باید شروع شه در منزل شروع میشه و با بچه هامون شروع میشه و این پروسه یه پروسه از درون به بیرون هستش و مسئولیت ما به عنوان یک گلوبال سیتیزن به عنوان یک شهروند این دهکده جهانی این هستش که با سخت کوشی سخت کاری هر روزه توجهمون تمرکزمون و به قول معروف اون مایندفولنس اون توجه حواس تمرکز حواس اتنشن و اون انرژی که میخوایم بذاریم رو بذاریم روی اینکه چگونه 
خودمون برای خودمون صلح درون بیاریم آرامش جسم و روان بیاریم سلف کمپشن شفقت نسبت به خود اون چیزی که امروزه تمام تحقیقات در رشته روانشناسی و نورو ساینس علوم عصب شناسی نشون میدن که از پایه های اساسی صلح هستش در چارچوب پرورش صلح با عزیزانی من مصاحبه و گفتمان داشتم در برنامه مام تاک که از طریق این گفتمان ها همدیگر رو با هم مرتبط کردیم و سعی کردیم که این کامیونیتی این جامعه که توجهش رو پرورش و آموزش صلح هستش به صورت جهانی به صورت انٹرنشنال سنتر فور پیس لرنینگ از یک همچین هاب یک همچین وسیله جمعی یک همچین میدیا رسانه جمعی مثل مام تاک و اینجا در کانال اندیشه بتونیم با شما عزیزان به خصوص در آن سوی دنیا به خصوص در خلیج فارس یا نزدیک خلیج فارس یا اون شرق و آسیا و غیره کنکت بکنیم و ببینیم که چگونه به عنوان مادر و پدران مسئول امروزه کانشس پرنتینگ لیدرز ما میتونیم این ارتقا آگاهی رو برای پرورش صلح در محیط زیستمون در آموزش و پرورشمون و در چارشوب راه رهبریمون در اصل پیش ببریم پیس لرنینگ پرنتینگ مسئولیت ما هستش مسئولیت ما مادر و پدران ایرانی هستش امروز خوشحال هستم که میهمان گرامی دارم که او سالیان دراز در رابطه با پلی تراپی توجهش روی تاکید و اثری که بازی درمانی پلی تراپی میتونه برای کودکان برای نوجوانان برای کیدز داشته باشه ایشون لایسنس سوشال ورکر هستن ال سی اس دبلیو هستن که سالیان سال در پرکتیس در شرق آمریکا ایست کوست به قول معروف در حال پرکتیس بودن در, در شهر نیوجرسی زندگی می کنن و سنتری رو به صلاح باز کردن و فعالیت کردن در این سنتر که به نام Mindful Kids for Kids هستش Mindfulness Kids for Kids اون شیوه یادگیری و یا بازی کودکان در چارچوب صلح پرورش صلح در اونها در درون و بیرون و خوشحالم که امروز این گفتمان رو به زبان انگلیسی با خانم انت خواهم داشت ایشون میذارم که خودشون خودشون رو اینتردوس بکنن و در رابطه با این پروژه مهم و کار مهمی که در شرق آمریکا در ایست کوست فعالیت میکنن صحبت بکنیم و ببینیم که شاید ایشون رو بتونیم بیاریم وست کوست و با هم یه کلابریشنی داشته باشیم انت ویلکم تو مام تاک آل دو وی هیر این الی سو الوها اند های اند هپی تو سی یو فرم نیو جرزی یس یس دس وار ای ام کرنلی وندرفل تل اس اباوت یور سورت اف پروفیشنال Um, path and practice, and what's inspired you to do the work that you do with mindfulness and kids? Okay. Well, I started my work as a social worker in Brooklyn, New York, mm-hmm. about 20, almost 25 years ago. Yeah. And during that time, I was working with children who were in foster care mm-hmm. and up for adoption. So I started my work working with children and families with very um, tough backgrounds as well as fragmented lives. Mm -hmm. I moved on to then study more about how to help children and families in scenarios in which they need a lot of guidance and went on to my graduate school at NYU. I studied uh, social work. And I settled into more of a clinical practice uh, later after six, seven years working in foster care. Um, I worked in school settings, outpatient mental health clinics. And throughout this time, I had always noticed, me being much younger then and slightly older now, that children and their families had a hard time just relaxing and being more present in their day-to-day life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And although mindfulness certainly was a component in my schooling, it wasn't as 
focused on as the clinical work and the diagnostic work. So later, as I kind of developed more professionally, I did my own studies and my own research in how to bring more mindfulness into my practice. Um, so I was actually away on a retreat for myself at Kripalu, which is a yoga meditation retreat center about three years ago. And while I was there, which I was so fortunate to be able to be there, I think it's hard to take time away from our schedules as well as the financial part to it. But I was lucky to be there for two days and I was training with Daniel Siegel, who I know you do know and learning wonderful things from him as well as all the colleagues that were participating. But while I was there, I envisioned doing something similar to what I was able to uh, participate in there, but on a local level. So when I came back from the retreat, I spoke with other wellness professionals about this idea of offering retreats for half a day or a full day for children to learn some of the tools that I had learned as well as that my colleagues were learning. So about two and a half years ago, we started doing groups and retreats and teaching children through different modalities of how to be more present. Mm -hmm. And that was more or less the beginning of me offering it to the community whereas I had always been offering it in my individual work, in my counseling practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you see a need in your community locally? Um, and also, uh, there's something very um, authentic about um, cultivating peace in your own uh, sort of neighborhood, um, mm -hmm. and, and also um, being open-minded and open-hearted about uh, the experiential aspect of it, not, not just as a therapist, um, but right. maybe more as a guidepost, as someone who is also experientially growing and evolving within uh, that uh, framework and uh, immer immersing ourselves in, in that process. Did you mm -hmm. feel um, that was uh, part of your motivation or that inspired you to take that path? Um, my own experiential process, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do feel, with many things, if you are not practicing yourself, it is, it is hard to teach it and mm -hmm. to embody it. Um, we all are trying to, I think, embody being mindful by mm -hmm. just being human and trying very hard to be authentic, uh, be connected to each other. So I certainly, in my neighborhood, in my community, there was more of a need for that with each other, mm -hmm. uh, feeling more disconnected because of you know technology, digital, busy schedules, so I do feel I myself started practicing mm -hmm. because it made me feel more connected internally. And as I was able to do that, I was connecting with others in a better way, uh, more empathic and mm -hmm. more authentic. Of course, first noticing it with my family, my children, my husband and then my neighbors and my extended family. I noticed a big difference for me personally mm -hmm. as I practiced mm -hmm. different forms of mindfulness. And when I say mindfulness, it, it's kind of a big word that yeah. encompasses a lot of things. So could you, could you define it for us or give an example so our audience, our viewers can, can be more tangible and they can understand uh, what we're talking about? Sure, sure. What it means to you. So mindfulness to me is being pre in the present moment mm -hmm. with an openness as well as a curiosity as to what is happening internally. Mm -hmm. So you may be feeling uh, in all your senses mm -hmm. as well as externally, what is happening around you. Mm -hmm. And though that seems simple, it is not so easy to do. Right. So to me, that's the definition, uh, 
however, practicing and doing that can be done in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So, for example, before the show uh, started, we were joking, and I said, you know, there's a lot of driving that happens here in our neck of the woods with moms and, you know, parents uh, driving kids around, um, and uh, we should work on, or I, I personally, I uh, sometimes practice uh, mindful driving um, mm -hmm. because it just brings a lot more peace into the driving experience. Um, yeah. And... Uh, can you give us examples for especially the busy parents? We, we know a lot of parents these days um, are busy, they're scattered more than before. Uh, e even when you're intentionally trying to uh, cut things back and not engage in too many activities, somehow um, with social responsibility and parenting and professional life and all the different roles that we play today as a man or woman, I, I feel that we have um, overextended ourselves a bit to uh, then, you know, maybe perhaps mindful practices in what we are doing could help bring more balance into our lives and create and cultivate more peace in what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we definitely have busy schedules as parents, uh, as people. Yeah. And that is actually kind of how I started my own practice, was recognizing I was constantly rushed, moving from one activity to the next, whether it be in my own work, mm -hmm. with my children, with my husband. And so I started working on transitions more. Hmm. So I always give this example that in the morning you're rushing out the door or trying to get out the door and maybe my children were five and seven at the time, still mastering tying their shoes even though they knew how to do it. I always wanted to lean down and do it for them to make it quicker and I would get very rattled in that moment. So I personally started practicing just basic breathing mm -hmm. and paying attention to that moment. And that made those transitions mm -hmm. like that. So that could be applied to driving, mm -hmm. applied to dropping your child off at the drop-off line at school. And really focusing on a few deep breaths, tuning into the surrounding your senses and that made a big difference for me personally mm -hmm. so I think we can always be present in what we're doing mm -hmm. by being very grounded in our surroundings mm -hmm. now that doesn't take our mind away from us so our mind is always moving in a lot of different directions but the more that we ground ourselves in concrete things, especially with children, mm -hmm. uh, the more present we are. So that's how I personally started. And I would always do it at times of transition or times where I already had some habit in place. So brushing my teeth, mm -hmm. driving my car. Before I would turn my car on, I would take three deep breaths and I would remind myself where I'm going mm -hmm. and why I'm going there. And, and then I would move into that. So that's how I started myself, mm -hmm. with being more mindful in my daily activities. Mm -hmm. And it, it, there is such a strong inside-out process, uh, as uh, you know, many parents have experienced, that if we're not transitioning peacefully and mindfully, then we cannot expect our children to transition peacefully and mindfully, Absolutely. right? <laughs> So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. Uh, and in fact, uh, sometimes I even I'm inspired by the pets that we have, the pets in our home, because okay. they're always mindful. Somehow they <laughs> they, they have this Thanks. unconditional love and mindfulness. Just you know, they they are happy. Just, just be. Yeah. yeah. And often, which is why I think pets are such a beautiful thing to have, even though they are something to take care of, yeah. but they're 
therapeutic in and of, themself, in and of themselves. They but. are, they are. Um, let's move into the play zone. Um, I'm a big fan of play therapy. I've always incorporated in my practice as a child psychologist and I love play therapy. I know you do play therapy and you're, um, that, those are your tool sets and you uh, incorporate mindfulness with play therapy. Tell us a bit about what that feels like. What, is, what does that look like? And um, for those who are interested to join some retreats or connect with you, how do they do that? Um, so play therapy in and of itself, as you know, is a modality and a training that you go through. Um, and mindfulness is in play therapy. Mm -hmm by nature of when children play, they are in the moment. And so play is a great way to access um, how a child experiences their world. So just observing their play and then entering into the play with them once you've observed and been invited in in some way. So the way I bring mindfulness into that is I will create moments after a child has led me through their play for, the, for their choice of the day. And we will, I will ask more questions around how their characters are perhaps feeling and how they could be feeling differently if we tried breathing or if we tried standing up on the ground with our shoes off in the grass. So I would work with children through characters, but then we would it would evolve to their own life and how they can incorporate it into their own life. Mm -hmm. So that's more on the individual level with play therapy. However, on a group level, because children play together a lot, I, is, is also a really wonderful way. And that that's really how I offer it more in a group and retreats. And that's through bringing kids together and doing team building activities mm -hmm. and then pairing up in partners and asking them to pay close attention to the partner that they were assigned to mm -hmm. and notice something about that child, you know, on the external mm -hmm. and then ask them questions about something that they don't see on the outside. So it helps them tune in to their peers mm -hmm. Uh, as well as get to know their peers more. So though that's not really play, it is a, a way of connecting. Mm -hmm. And you know now children aren't as connected live. They're connected as we're connected right now. So I think it, there's a great value to it and the kids really, really love it. Um, so those are, that's just a quick example of what we would do in a group or in a, on a retreat day. Mm -hmm. But that is amongst many activities that the children are there together, working together towards a common goal, getting to know each other and sharing through play or as they get older, they have more of a, a dialogue and a talking. Mm -hmm. But initially it's really through play and it, it, it opens up their minds because when a child is playing, I think just like when we are relaxed, mm -hmm. and kids usually relax through play, their minds open up to new ways of being, mm -hmm. to feel more comfortable. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, well needed with the alpha generation, especially on how technology um, moves the brain to many different places, and it's counter uh, to mindfulness. and finding sort of that inner peace, groundedness, and core um, calmness. And so when you're playing in, in that framework, uh, it's a great way to cultivate peace and also uh, build those uh, neural pathways and peace learning pathways so that they become more and more familiar with what it feels like to play peacefully. Uh, I see more and more these days on, on the playground where kids are um, you know, racing and uh, oftentimes in conflict about sharing or having their feelings hurt because they're not feeling seen or heard. And uh, a lot of those um, issues uh, 
seem to be stemming from uh, just not having enough mindful connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, so. It is definitely something that is learned. Yeah. You know, is we are all social beings. Mm -hmm. How we connect is very different. And helping with those connections, starting in the home with the parents, mm -hmm. which I love working with the young parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, really, you, you can see kids grow, you know, and be more connected despite whatever they may be struggling with. I think um, most, most of us really thrive in that. Um, yeah. Let, let's move on to the topic of uh, in school. Uh, parents are always uh, very curious and wonder and love to learn about the school environment. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on the playground, in the classroom, if children are having difficulty paying attention or uh, they have more uh, aggressive tendencies or um, just are having a hard time down-regulating, uh, especially those uh, negative uh, feelings, emotions. Um, do you teach or do you help parents? Do you guide kids, teenagers, in uh, mindful practices? And why uh, do you call it mindful kids for kids? Why, why is it important to have sort of this peer-to-peer, kids-for-kids uh, relationship in this uh, growth, you know, guided uh, process? Sure. I Yes, I do incorporate collaboration with schools in my practice as mm -hmm. well with parents. So many of the skills or techniques that we practice in my office or at retreats or in groups can be carried over to the schools mm -hmm. um, with some like modifications, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. uh, classroom is, is, is hard, but if you're teaching the child how to access their inner um, calmness, they can really do that anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but they need it, they also need to see it modeled. So with children, I have been going into the classrooms and teaching lessons. And once they have a few techniques or a few ideas of ways of stepping back and taking a break or taking a breath, mm -hmm. then they're more likely to do it if they see it modeled. Mm -hmm. So the teachers often can model that or another peer can model that. Mm -hmm. So that is part what led me to mindful kids for kids. Mm -hmm. I think the, I, well, it's twofold. So children working together to be more connected, to share their ideas, to share what works for them is heard a little bit more than a parent or a teacher leading a child. Mm -hmm. I think kids learn from each other. It's much richer, it's more natural. And so I encourage that, but of course we always lead our children as well. Mm -hmm. um, so the Kids for Kids kind of came out of that. But the other part of Kids for Kids is when we take care of ourselves and we take care of those around us in a peaceful, loving way, we're able to extend that even out more to helping our community mm -hmm. or helping other communities. So I have programs, I can't really, I guess, call them programs, but a few times a year, we will do a toy drive um, and bring those toys to, say, a shelter in a surrounding community where kids will learn about that community as well as the children and the families living in that community. Mm -hmm. So maybe they need some help. So I have this kids helping kids program. Mm -hmm. So a lot of kids who are involved in the retreats or groups or some, sometimes the individual counseling will participate in the kids helping kids. So that's how I see it to be twofold. Um, but I hope that answers or gives a little direction on how that came to be for me. That's uh, great. It's also a great um, 
model, I believe, for, for those who are watching the program who perhaps in their communities uh, would like to yep. start something like this. Um, I agree 100% that uh, when it's youth driven, when it's kids for kids, it's always uh, more meaningful, more empowering, and it comes from a place of um, strong social learning. Because like you say, kids like learning from their friends and kids. And uh, even though peace learning parenting could be very important and fundamental to setting the ground and you know, uh, the, the core values and also practicing what it's like on a daily basis to cultivate peace in your environment, when you're supporting or guiding or cultivating youth leadership, the Kids for Kids, and bringing mindfulness into it like you are, um, Annette, it's uh, so powerful, it's so powerful. And you can start this in your local community. You can start this in your neighborhood. Um, what you need to do is connect with Annette or other uh, organizations who uh, perhaps provide uh, tools for mindfulness training or mindfulness programs or um, curriculums. Uh, I'm happy to help as well. I'm uh, also um, soon to be certified to be a mindfulness coach. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I have studied with, you know, Dan's work and his workshops and followed um, many mindful coaching uh, paths, um, but it is a, a, a immersive, you know, there is an immersion uh, about it and uh, practicing it, like you said, Annette, is key. And so uh, I'm excited about this journey. I'm excited about integration of peace learning and mindfulness and how um, the kids, my children and their community and their friends and Kids for Kids can cultivate mindfulness in their communities on the playground while doing sports and uh, just spread peace. It's a beautiful way. And uh, yeah, your, your model, I love it. And I love what you're doing. And uh, I love collaborating with you and having you on Mom Talk. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. A lot of great stuff that people are doing, so I'm happy to see you're doing the same, and thank you. hopefully we can continue to share ideas and kind of have the ripple effect of what, you know, collaborating as well as being mindful with everybody around you can, can do. Yeah. Share. Yeah, that's the positive of uh, social media and technology, right? I think yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that the youth leaders, the youth leadership, has that advantage. They yeah. they can have this ripple effect. They can share ideas. They can share uh, good ideas and uh, yeah. be more solution focused on bringing world peace. Um, and they're on it. You know, kids who are really uh, committed and full heartedly. Uh, connected to it and I know many schools are I know in Europe um, the, the you know unified school districts are already uh, they've opted in in integrating mindfulness programs in their schooling and starting their day with mindfulness practices mm -hmm. integrating it throughout their curriculum and lessons uh, and oftentimes when you know, parents come to my office or teachers are consulting with me regarding uh, ADD attention deficit disorders or lack of attention or, you know, this child just cannot concentrate. Um, yeah. I, I say, have you tried mindfulness? Have you tried mindful practices? And, and just, you know, building on um, um, being attuned or connected to that part of your mind where it's attention uh, driven you know you, you sure. can absolutely yeah and it comes from focusing on your breath like you said you know it starts with the most essential part of your living your being yeah. your breath right. and your yeah. heartbeat you know sometimes i i ask kids to just put their hands on their heart or give themselves a butterfly hug and yeah. i say yeah give yourself a butterfly hug feel your fingers on your skin um and in your mind uh, stay connected to you, you know, the, the me in you and awareness of that feeling, what it feels like to take that breath and feel alive and feel at peace. Um, and all it takes is really 21 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. A, few, a few seconds. A few very deep breath. I, I think we underestimate it. You mm -hmm. know, and I, I as well, those sound so familiar, you know, teaching a child how to take their own heart rate, you know, or to feel their heart beat. Mm -hmm. uh, 
becomes aware of their body and what they're feeling. Because so often I think children feel, don't mm-hmm. necessarily recognize that what their body is feeling, mm-hmm. there's the interplay between the, between the mind and the body. Yes. So teaching them how to tune into their body is, is so critical. Mm-hmm. And breath is, you know, we are, we're always breathing. But we're not always paying attention to how we're breathing, if, mm-hmm. if it's rapid, if it's mm-hmm. slow. And so tuning into that mm-hmm. and teaching kids and adults and, and myself mm-hmm. how to take some really deep cleansing breaths, mm-hmm. you, can, you can do that anywhere. So you don't need to be in a yoga class. You don't need to be in a formal sitting meditation. You could be driving in LA in traffic and (laughs) closing your eyes and taking three deep, very deep cleansing breaths. And it makes the difference. We know that the brain science behind it is Mm -hmm. fascinating. Um, So the more that we do that, the more we teach kids that, I think the healthier they'll be. Mm -hmm. And we can do it in very fun ways. Mm -hmm. with children I think you know there's a misperception I believe sometimes that there's a seriousness to Mm -hmm. this that we have to know how to do mindfulness Mm -hmm. and and learn it but really it is our it's in our nature Mm -hmm. it's like returning to the original our original being as being in our mother's womb and being calm and and at peace Uh, we all have that in us Mm -hmm. so kids access it differently because they are active children. Mm -hmm. So I often use that, you know, familiar for the Hoberman sphere. Mm -hmm. I've seen those, but I actually have one here. I'm going to grab it. I do a lot of breathing techniques with children with this. Mm -hmm. Um, Because a lot of times when you articulate to a child what you're teaching them to do, they sometimes don't get it unless you show them in a concrete fashion. So Mm -hmm. the Hoberman sphere, I explain that when we take deep breaths in, we're trying to expand our diaphragm, our belly. Mm -hmm. And when you use a Hoberman sphere and you breathe in and you breathe that Hoberman sphere out, Mm -hmm. hold your breath, and then you release very slowly and the Hoberman sphere goes back in. Mm -hmm. It becomes a visual and a concrete way for them to practice. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of children are geared towards doing those things when there's something concrete or multisensory, mm-hmm. uh, as well as sort of fun, because mm-hmm. then they engage in it. Um, so yeah, I think there's many ways to do that. Beautiful. I love that. I'm going to use it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yes, a very too. good tool. Uh, yeah, yes, wonderful. Yes. So I'm going to take a moment um, to translate some of our, the content sure. of our conversation for our Farsi speaking audience. Dustan ba khanume anet ke play therapist hastan besela moshabere ejtemayi hastan khadamat ejtemayi va توجهشون رو گذاشتن روی اینکه به کودکان و نوجوانان مایندفولنس یا اون تکنیک شیوه مخصوص به صلاح بازی درمانی که توجه کودک رو توجه نوجوان رو میبره روی اون رابطه‌ای که فرد با تنفسش داره با تپش قلبش داره با خودش داره و این بر اساس این تئوری هستش که ما هرچی ذهنمون به صلاح در یک استیت دیسوسییشن یا یک استیتی که یک فعالیت های جوشی و در حال به صلاح احساسی عاطفی بالایی باشه در اون استیت در اون احساسات و عواطف فکر سلامت یا افکار درست یا ذهنی که سالم هستش و تعادل روحی روانی داره کمتر میشه بنابراین جوری که ما میتونیم این رو آرامش براش بیاریم در ذهنمون 
یا در هوش و حواسمون یک صلح یا پرورش صلح انجام بدیم این هستش که تمرکز و توجهمون رو در ابتدا مثل یوگا روی تنفسمون بذاریم روی اون هوایی که قرار در تنفسمون به داخل بدنمون بیاریم و به بچه ها یاد بدیم که بعضی از کسانی که بازی درمانی انجام میدن یک توپایی که ایشون خانم انت نشون دادن این سفیرایی که باز و بسته میشه این توپا رو نشون میدن با بچه ها و میگن اون به صلاح شکم تو اون دایفرگم تو به این صورت باز میشه وقتی که هوا درش وارد میکنی و تنفس میکنی نفس عمیق در درونت باز میکنه تو رو و بهت به صلاح انرژی میده و بعد با تنفس دیگری شما میتونید هوش و حواس یا توجه نه هوش توجه و تمرکزتون روی این تنفس میاد و کمک میکنه که تعادل تعدال بیشتری در سلول های عصبی یا مغز شما یا سیستم عصبی شما به وجود بیاد این رو در علوم روانشناختی و عصب شناسی نشون دادن و آقای دکتر دن سیگال که به صلاح این تئوری اتچمنت و اینکه چگونه میتونین با مایندفولنس و این تمرین ها ذهنی سالم تر روابطی سالم تر شاداب تر و خوشبختی بیشتری در زندگیتون بیارین ایشون یکی از فاوندینگ فادرای هستن یکی از پدران به صلاح پزشکان و روان پزشکانی هستن که این کارایی ایشون روی مایندفولنس هستش و همونطور که در ابتدای برنامه نگاه کردیم جوونا امروزه نیاز دارن چرا که استرسشون به قول خودشون استرسشون بالاست و برای پایین بردن استرسشون باید این کارا رو انجام بدن مایندفولنس پرکتیسز ذهنشون رو بتونن به یه جایی بیارن که به قول دن سیگال دکتر سیگال در ذهن سبز یا ذهنی که آدل و صلح توش توش وجود داره در اونجا بتونن حفظش بکنن و خب این خیلی مهمه وقتی ما با بچه هامون بازی می کنیم اونها رو آگاه بکنیم اونها رو هوشیار بکنیم بهشون این اندیشه رو این به صلاح کار رو یاد بدیم که چرا این تمرین ها رو انجام میدیم چرا این بازی ها رو می کنیم چرا در محیطمون سعی می کنیم که یوگا کلاس یوگا به وجود بیاریم با بچه هامون آرام تر صحبت بکنیم اونها رو کمک بکنیم که توجه بتونن بذارن روی به صلاح تپش قلبشون یا کنکت بکنن با تپش قلبشون اینا همه پله های پرورش صلح هستش و در مقابلش وقتی که شما تهاجمی برخورد میکنی با حمله برخورد میکنی وحشیانه برخورد میکنی با بچه یا با نوجوان یا با دانش آموز این درست مقابله تمدن و صلح و پرورش صلح هستش بنابراین اگر شما میخواین جنگ و خون ریزی و تشنج و بدبختی رو پرورش بدین این کارا در این محیط بازی مال شما ولی ماهایی که توجهمون رو صلح هستش یا پرورش صلح هستش یا زندگی خوب کردن یا آرامش داشتن و به صلاح پرورش آرامش ما این کمپ به صلاح پرورش صلح و صلح آمیز برخورد کردن و کارهایی که میتونیم انجام بدیم که پیش ببریم دنیا رو به سوی دنیایی که تعادلش بهتره و صلح درش بیشتر وجود داره و کامینیکیشن بهتره و افراد با خوشبختی و خوشحالی زندگی میکنن و به صلاح ارتقا و این خوشبختیشون به جای بالاتر و بالاتری میره در زندگیشون انتخاب انتخاب شماست و اگر متاسفانه مثل کشور ما در جایی هستین که محیطتون محیطی هستش که توجهش رو تشنج و خشونت و به صلاح نابرابری هستش 
می باید صدای شما به دنیا و اون کسانی که میتونن انکاس بکنن و کمک بکنن کمک رسانی برای مردم و خانواده ها در چارچوب به اون رول و به صلاح کارای اجتماعی ما هستش به قول اینجا یا سوشال ریسپانسیبیلیتی اگر شما زندگی دارین که در صلح زندگی میکنین در این کمپ سلحامیز و خوش و خورم زندگی میکنین برای اون کسایی که توی کمپ جنگ و بدبختی و به صلاح تشنج هستن میباید فعالیت بکنیم و کارهایی انجام بدیم که به صلاح به انکاس به تمام اون رهبران و کسانی که در تصمیم گیری های مهم جهان تصمیم میگیرن برسه که بدونن که چگونه برخورد بکنن با این دولت ها و این کسانی که برای مردمشون خوشبختی و صلح و آرامش به وجود نمیارن این کاری هستش که ما به عنوان یک شرفند این دهکده جهانی میتونیم انجام بدیم خانم انت انت thank you so much for being on mom talk today you're very welcome thank you for having me so joyful i wanted to show you very quickly if we yes. have a minute the t-shirt sure. that i've signed yes Um, with a very special message on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from my camp t-shirt. So is that too big? I have a card as well. Can you see? We can see it. Yes, we can. The space between... Papa? Yeah. Say, tell us about it. And the space between opposites is where friendships happen. Space between opposites is where friendship happens. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that is gorgeous. You, is that a mo moon and is that? It is a moon, moon and hugging the oh, sun or oh. hugging the earth. Um, oh. Yeah, it's very sweet. I actually have purchased a shirt similar to this about three years ago. And I, I it always struck a conversation with anybody around me. Um, oh, what is that? And oh, it's so sweet. It's so cute. And um, so I, I created a similar image and then came up with that quote. I think it's uh, kind of off Viktor Frankl's The Space Between Stimulus and Response is Where Growth Lies. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took that and made a quote that children could relate to oh. and that I feel very passionately about. So. Oh, beautiful. Let's wow. Go. I'm inspired. I am so inspired. So can we get the shirt? Is it available yeah. on your website? Awesome. It is available on Etsy and it is also available on my website through Etsy. So okay. uh, on Etsy, it's Kids for Kids Mindful because Mindful Kids for Kids was taken. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're for sale there, but I'll send you one too so you can Wonderful. wear it. Wonderful. I can't wait to wear it. Yeah. Thank you for joining us and You're happy welcome. Mom Talk LA. Until next yeah. time, Dustan, Khoda Nagahdar.